encryption is a non-negotiable aspect of every cloud resource these days. More and more of AWS services are getting natively integrated with KMS. Hence, it is really important for you to understand this AWS offering in detail. I've personally found some of the concepts of KMS quite confusing at times. Hence, in this three hour long KMS masterclass, I picked up some of the most important concepts of KMS and tried to make it simple for you. You will see a lot of demos and real world scenarios in this session. And I highly recommend you to try it out in your sandbox accounts. KMS service is really unique in certain ways. For example, its resource-based policy has a different behavior than the resource-based policy of other AWS services. We will start this session with an understanding of envelope encryption mechanism, and then we will dive deeper into its implementation in AWS with KMS. After understanding different types of KMS keys, you need to understand the access control mechanism of KMS keys. How does the KMS key policy work along with the IAM policies, for example. We will discuss that in detail and then we'll dive deeper with the demo of different scenarios. Next, we will understand attribute-based access control via key alias and we'll explore some of the tricky condition keys for your policies. Encryption context could be your friend when it comes to understanding the internals. That will be our fifth item in this session. After that, we will pick up the AWS service that provides the maximum flavors of encryption or maximum types of encryption possible, right? Our old and rugged S3. We will also dive deeper into the newly launched concept of S3 bucket key, which can reduce your KMS charges drastically. Well, no discussion is complete without the pricing discussion, right? So that's the next one. And at last, we have written some exercise tasks for you along with the collection of further reading material. You will see the timestamp for all of these topics in the video description, but I highly recommend you to watch this in the given sequence so that you don't miss anything. Well, my name is Mayank and I look forward to your comments for this session. I hope you really enjoy it. Let's get started. You encrypt data so that it becomes unreadable for others. You will require a key to encrypt your data. You can think of this key as a string, a series of characters. Hence, it is really important to keep this key in a secure manner. If someone who is not authorized gets access to your encryption keys, then it's not a good situation, right? Uh, in a big production setup, there are many requirements around creation, storage, rotation, and then deletion of this key. Even. AWS KMS helps you in this space. It provides you with all the required capabilities to manage your keys in a secure and compliant manner. Okay, let's talk about envelope encryption as a concept first. The important thing to understand in this is that the key which you are using to do the encryption further gets encrypted in order to keep it secure, right? So what we are saying is, let's say there is some data which we want to encrypt. And of course, in order to encrypt this data, we would require a key right, which, which we'll use to do the encryption. Now, in case of envelope encryption, this key, which is actually getting used to do the encryption of the data, this key further gets encrypted by another key in order to keep it secure, right? So you can see a kind of chain is getting created here, right? So because the like ultimate key, which you are seeing on the left hand side, that is responsible for encrypting the encryption key. Hence, encryption key is also kind of secure. You do not keep the encryption key in the plain format. Now, what we are following here is uh, on the on the right hand side, you can see a green and red type of color. So wherever you see that green thing, you understand it's plain, plain format or plain format of the key and the red thing or pink thing is the encrypted format, right? So what we are saying here is that the encryption key, which is getting used to actually encrypt the data that is further getting encrypted by another key, right? And you can go ahead and actually implement multiple such levels if you want. 
so for example you can go ahead and have like more and more such chaining done right for example if you see in this picture uh what we are doing is there is there is this actual key which is getting used to encrypt the data then that is getting encrypted by another key then that one is getting encrypted by another key and so on and so forth and you can have multiple such levels in your system when you are implementing it uh we will we'll get into the we'll get into the implementation within aws in a minute and there are multiple variations in that and which i'll explain you okay so the important thing here is in this diagram which we are seeing so we talked about the security of encryption key that it is getting further encrypted so it becomes secure but then what about the security of the root key which is on the left hand side how do we ensure its security that's something which we need to discuss right so let's try and see the um, implementation of this concept in aws so in aws what happens is let's take the same thing we have our data which we need to encrypt so what happens is you specify right whenever you want to encrypt any data for just for an for example sake let's take it as ebs volume right if you are creating an ebs volume you can specify that you want to encrypt it with a particular key so the key which you specify at the time of creating that ebs volume let's say that key is actually a kms key right uh, of aws kms service so it's a kms key and the important thing to understand here is that this kms key always lives or always resides within kms service so this key never leaves the kms service right so what happens is you actually utilize the kms service and you request certain data keys and these data keys actually get used for the encryption process so basically a request will be done to the kms service and using the specified kms key data key will be generated right it's a it's a simple api call i'll show you the api calls and everything in a, in a while but just understand for now that what you request kms services that give me data key and when that request is done you actually specify that which kms key it should use right for example when we uh, you know i'll show you in the demo that we can have multiple kms key in our account so you have to specify that using which kms key you want to generate the data key so as a result what happens kms service returns you the data key in the plain format and also in the encrypted format right that's why you see two colors there right so it is the same key same data key but one is there in the plain format another one is there in the encrypted format why is it so because the that plain data key will be used to actually encrypt the data so that will be used to encrypt the data and once the encryption is done system actually goes and deletes that plain version of the data key right because we we said that we want to keep things secure right so we do not want to keep that plain version of the data key for long so once the encryption work or encryption process is done the data key is deleted the plain data key is deleted the plain version or plain format of the data key is deleted and what happens additionally is the encrypted data key is stored along with that data you know the data which is which has been encrypted along with that the encrypted format of the data key is stored why is it so because later on we require the data key to decrypt the the data as well right so this thing which you are seeing this this our actual data let's say it is ebs volume so whatever is there in in that ebs volume later on when we want to read that data we need to decrypt it right then only somebody would be able to understand it so in order to do that in order to do that decryption once again data key would be required right and at that time this encrypted data key would be fetched and from that encrypted data key again the plain data key would be derived 
how it would be derived it would be derived via decryption i will explain you just in a minute but for now in here you understand that what happens as part of encryption currently we are just talking about encryption so within encryption what all what all we understood here that we have our kms key which we specify when we are creating um, any aws service we specify a particular kms key for the encryption if you have created an ebs volume or s3 bucket you would have specified it otherwise i'll also show you uh, in the demo we'll talk about um, ebs volume and s3 uh, their encryption process as well in detail so you specify a kms key that kms key always lives within kms service so it doesn't leave kms service at all so it is all safe there the way you interact with the kms key is via api call you can there are different api calls available you can call those apis and via that you can interact with the kms service and you can utilize the kms key but you can never you can never take the kms key out of the kms service you have to understand that right so suppose if you want to encrypt something you can send a request if you want to decrypt something you can send a request like that so what happens as part of encryption is you you or the system requests kms service that please generate data key for me and what happens is that kms service returns back plain format of data key and encrypted format of data key right and the plain format of data key is used to do the encryption and once the encryption is done plain data key is deleted next thing is the encrypted data key which was there that gets stored along with the encrypted data why because this will be utilized later on to do the decryption so now let's understand let's try and understand the decryption process so we have our data set which is encrypted now and that's why it is written now we need to decrypt it right so what happens as part of decryption so when we want to decrypt this we what do we require in order to decrypt this we require the data key right which was used to do the encryption the same thing we require to do the decryption because here we are discussing the asymmet sorry so here we are discussing the symmetric encryption right what what does that mean it means the key which is used for doing the encryption the same key will be used to do the decryption as well um i'll link a video here uh, in the description which you can go ahead and watch where i have explained the difference between symmetric and asymmetric in quite detail in case you are not clear about it but here we are talking about symmetric encryption right so uh, the data is there which we which we want to decrypt so from this we will first or the system will first extract the encrypted data key right which we had stored in the last step if you remember now this encrypted data key will be sent as a request uh, it will be sent to kms and will re will request that please decrypt this right so kms service will decrypt this thing and what will we get as a result as a result or in the response we'll get the plain format of the data key now that's what we wanted right so with this plain format of the data key the decryption of data would be done and will be able to read the data normally right so that's what we discussed here that the encrypted data key which was there that needs to be decrypted and for that purpose kms service got used because a decrypt api call was done to the kms service okay so with the and then of course the plain data key comes back and using that we are able to decrypt it all right one last thing here is whenever the usage of plain data key is done system is intelligent or aws system is intelligent to delete it from the memory right it it would not keep the plain format of the data key for long time uh, because of the security reasons of course so it's as a best practice it gets deleted once its work is done so here once the decryption work or decryption process is done the data key would be deleted all right so i hope you are now clear that how aws implements envelope encryption right to 
to really secure your data and whenever you are encrypting any data set within AWS like by using any of AWS services like EBS, S3 or RDS internally it implements this envelope encryption so though you specify a particular KMS key what happens is that that KMS key actually is used to generate a data key or like multiple data keys and then those data keys are actually used to do the encryption of the object or encryption of the data which you want right so that's what gets implemented there's just a couple of things which i want to uh, highlight here once again so that you are you are absolutely clear about it aws kms key sometimes in short it is called kms key alone right it is the new term which replaces cmk some of you who have been using aws for quite some time you might have heard this term customer master key so now aws is phasing out that term slowly and they uh, they are using the term kms key that's it right or aws kms key for that matter and within that then we have types which which i'll explain you just in a bit right important thing to understand is it is all secure and your kms key never leaves your kms service it lives inside that and you interact via api calls or via commands right so whether it is it is aws system or which is you know a service like s3 or ebs or rds which is uh, trying to do the encryption of your data or let's say you want to utilize kms service as part of your application code the way you interact with kms is via api calls or via commands that's how you do it the same way other aws services like s3 ebs etc will also do the actual keys which get used to encrypt the data are the data keys right and i explained you the whole flow now how do you actually go ahead and generate the data key like let's say if you want to generate it how will you do it then there is a command called generate data key you can do aws kms generate data key specify the key id right with using which key you want to generate the data key so you specify the key id you specify the the specification i mean give the specification for the key uh, let's say aes 256 you want to use there are a couple of standards which are supported there so you specify that and what it returns is it will return you um, the plain text as you can see the plain text of the data key and also the encrypted format of that data key which is given here in the ciphertext blob okay so uh, that's an important thing to understand and of course i explained you that you will use the plain data key to encrypt the customer data and then you know encrypted data key is something which you will store along with the encrypted data so that later on it can be used to decrypt right to decrypt the customer data it's it's important to understand that during encryption and later on during decryption also of your customer data plain format of data key will be required right so i hope this whole thing is clear for you there is a small task for you which i'll request you to maybe you can go ahead and pause the video for some time and do it quickly go ahead and review some of the important kms actions right basically commands or equivalent of that would be api calls so things like create key right so create key is there for creating an actual kms key generate data key is to create uh, or to generate data key by using a particular kms key right and uh, if you just want to create the create the encrypted format of the data key and don't want the plain text then you have generate data key without plain text uh, you also have generate data key pair i'll let you go ahead and read about it. it well it is a it is when you want to you know generate the key pair for the you know uh, an an asymmetric key pair that's when that one is used and then you have encrypt and decrypt right encrypt is to of course like you send a plain plain data and kms service encrypts it encrypts it and gives you back 
and decrypt is when you send the cipher text or encrypted data and it gives you the plain thing right so i want you to go ahead and read about this spend some time it would be really useful you know, uh, you know i'm giving the url in the description you can go ahead and read it spend some time read through the read through the pages or documentation of all of these and uh, it will really help you in your overall usage uh, you will see an important uh, a difference in case of encrypt and decrypt when uh, in case of encrypt right say you are let's say you are giving you are giving a plain text right let's say knowledge india is a youtube channel for example so this is your plain text and you are giving it to kms to encrypt it so you have to specify a kms a kms key right you have to give a key id that use this key and encrypt the this particular thing right so it would do the encryption and give you the encrypted text back the good thing is during decryption you don't have to specify the key id so whatever encrypted text which you get back right inside that in in that encrypted text in like in the form of metadata this thing is this thing is stored that which key was used to do this encryption so when you do the decryption you don't have to specify the key id now that's where i'm saying just go ahead and try to read this the documentation for this i'll also link a video which i did earlier where i have shown the demo of encrypt and decrypt commands so you can check that as well if you want right but please go through and read these and and try to understand the purpose and what parameters we pass and there are some sample commands given go through it and maybe try and execute them so next thing i want to show you the kms keys and a bit in the in the console right so let's let's go ahead and look at it what we'll try to see is we will see the aws managed keys and customer managed keys right so please understand i'm saying it again earlier the term used to be customer master key now that customer master key term is not being used so you also drop it try to use the terminology which is getting used currently which is aws managed keys and customer managed keys so first let's look at uh, look at the demo quickly after that we will um, we will come back and we'll try to compare these things so i'm here in my aws account operating in the northern virginia region let me go to kms service so when you go to kms service and you click on aws managed keys you can see here there are let's say i've got five keys currently right so aws slash s3 aws slash cloud9 and so on and so forth so what does that mean it means if um, if i am creating an s3 bucket in the northern virginia region uh, the default key which i may specify provided i am choosing a kms key the default key which i may specify would be this one aws slash s3 so it's an aws managed one right in the same way uh, for rds they have created one now next is customer managed keys this is something which i have created and i can manage it but what what does that mean when i say i can manage it it means i can disable it whenever i want i can go ahead and control its uh, policy and permissions and things like that right for example if i let's say select this and i look at the actions i have a lot of options enable disable i can schedule its uh, deletion as well right i can edit tags etc i if i get inside i can go ahead and actually manage its policy as well right with which i can control that let's say a particular user in my account can use this key whereas an, another user cannot use this key right so i can manage the policy and um, uh, with that i can control that who which user or role is able to use this particular key right so that's the difference that's an important difference whereas if you go to aws managed keys you can see i don't have any action itself available to me which means if, can i go ahead and disable this key answer is no can i go ahead and control that whether user a is able to use this one and user b is not able to use this one answer is no i cannot control it right so those are the major differences i'll i'll sum it up for you later on but uh, so please understand that these are two types right now kms keys are 
regional in nature right i always i always talk about the scope of a service the scope of a resource so uh, in case of kms kms keys are uh, regional in nature how do you check that very simple always go ahead and look at the arn right so for example let me go ahead and click on this one so of course this part let's say this part is the key id an auto generated id which you cannot control uh, quite difficult to remember of course uh, so we have got that key id and this is how it is represented now if you see this carefully us east one region is mentioned so which means this key lives in northern virginia okay um, same is the case for customer managed keys as well their scope is region they live in one region uh, let me just do one thing for example if i go and try to let's say open oregon region here for my kms service you will see that i don't have any aws managed keys none at all right here i had like five whereas here i have zero why is it so it is it is in this way because the aws managed keys uh, do not get automatically created as soon as your account comes into existence okay it doesn't happen that way rather when you go ahead and actually utilize that service for the first time right and you say i want to do encryption at that time aws goes ahead and actually creates this key right so for example what has happened here is i have probably created an s3 bucket in the northern virginia region and i said i want to do uh, i want to do encryption and i i you know selected this key that's why it got created in northern virginia whereas in oregon region i i have i have not created any bucket where i have said that i want to do encryption that's why in this region there is no um, kms key for s3 service yet okay so i i hope that makes sense what i'll what i would like to show you here is let me go to s3 my s3 console and uh, i'll show you something right so here in my if i sort it by region i've got a couple of buckets in the in the oregon region right but probably none of these are um, are actually encrypted so let's do one thing i'll go ahead and create a bucket and i'll create it in the oregon region i'm gonna call it uh, ki demo right so this is what i'm calling my bucket just trying to keep it unique okay now let's scroll down and if we go to the encryption option let's see it carefully uh, i hope you you have read this announcement some time back that uh, aws now enforces default encryption in case of s3 right default encryption so that's why you see that now when i'm creating the new bucket right by default this thing is selected which is server side encryption with amazon s3 managed keys what is this amazon s3 managed keys is it is it similar to aws managed key answer is no it is not okay i'll explain you i'll explain you all the different types of keys just in a minute so please uh, be patient but here we have got couple of options you can clearly see the second option where it says server side encryption with aws kms right with aws kms so that means with the with this itself you can understand when we are talking about kms aws kms keys aws key management service aws kms keys so this is the option which would refer to kms keys right so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and select this and here i will go ahead and select choose from your aws kms keys if you want you can paste the arn by selecting this but i'm saying i want to choose by a drop down so here if you see in when i click on this what do i see i just see one option right and i see this option it says um, you know whatever us west 2 which is the oregon region and in this account it says alias slash aws slash s3 but with do i mean whether this key 
is there in the Oregon region? Answer is no. So currently it's not there, but they have designed the UI in this way that here if I go ahead and I select this option, this would be the trigger point for AWS to go ahead and create that key for the first time. Post that, I can create multiple buckets in the Oregon region and I can continue to use that key. That's possible, right? But at this point, what I'm trying to tell you is, at this point, this key is not there. So whenever you, whenever, basically in summary, whenever you go ahead and create a particular uh, service, be it S3 or RDS, right? In a particular region for the first time and you choose the encryption option with the KMS default key, then then that AWS managed key gets created here. I have done that already in the Northern Virginia region for a couple of my services. That's why you see maybe I created an RDS sometime, right? And I did this and I created a code commit uh, repository or secrets manager or Cloud9 or S3 earlier. That's why these keys exist already in Northern Virginia. In Oregon, it doesn't exist. Let, let me just quickly go ahead and select this option. Of course, I'm selecting something which doesn't exist currently. So I'll select this and I'll go ahead and just say create bucket. I'll come back, you know, later on, I'll explain you all the different types of um, S3 encryption as well. So don't worry about it. There is good amount of discussion available there. So we just created this bucket, this particular bucket. And let me just quickly go here and try to refresh this. Let's see whether the key appeared. You can see it is not here yet. This is something for you to understand when you are, let's say, creating a new key or sometimes you are updating the policies of a key, etc. You have to be slightly patient. You have to give it some time, not a lot, but maybe a couple of minutes and you should see the key available here. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes and we'll refresh and we'll come back here. In the meanwhile, here you can see in properties, if you go to default encryption, it says server side encryption with AWS KMS keys and which key the AWS S3 key. You see, it is, it is even giving me this um, link, which I can click and try to see. So you see here, here the details are opening up if i go back to this one now it is showing up i can go and refresh this here as well and it should have it should come by now it is not here yet okay now it came right so it, as i told you don't worry it might just take a couple of minutes so you can see now we have got our aws slash this is the this is the alias for the key which is nothing but a friendly name right that's all it is we'll talk more about alias there is a section where we are going to discuss about alias as well further in the video so um, this is the key id and this is the friendly name to call you know to basically refer that key aws slash s3 and can we go ahead and change it Ch can we go ahead and edit this alias answer is no right because it is aws managed key whereas if i go to my northern virginia region and i go to customer managed keys so there are two keys which i have created and for these keys i can manage a lot of stuff so for example if i click on this one i can see that i have got one alias called app2 key for example if i want i can go ahead and create one more alias let's say i'll say ki alias for example right and i'll just say create alias now you can see I just added one more alias for this particular key and which means I can go ahead and, and basically refer this key or use this key either by this name or by this name. It's possible, right? So if I go ahead and click here, you can see it says this plus one more. So th those, those were some of the differences. One more thing which I quickly want to show you is if I go ahead and just try to create a new bucket, let's say in the Northern Virginia region, right? I'm not going to fill the whole thing. Just want to show you this one. So if I select that I want to do via SSE KMS option, which means I want to use a key from the KMS service. Here in the drop down, you will see that I'll see the default key, which is AWS slash S3, the AWS managed key, plus I will see all the customer managed keys which I have created. So I've created two customer managed keys in my Northern Virginia region, which you are able to see here, right? Which I showed you here as well. Okay, so I hope you understood the difference between, uh, you know, you got some idea of 
this whole um, AWS managed keys and customer managed keys. So those are the two terms. Now, um, as I told you, I'll explain you about this one as well, just in a minute. So let me minimize this and we'll go back here. So let's summarize this so that you are perfectly clear. And as always, I'll suggest you to go ahead and uh, try it in your account so that you are confident about this one. So about AWS managed keys and customer managed keys, the first important difference is of course, AWS manages the key. You cannot enable, disable, delete or control key policy, its tags, etc. You cannot do that in case of AWS managed key. Right opposite, in case of customer managed keys, all of those things you can do. You can manage the key and you can control various properties of it. You can control its permissions, etc. Uh, the next thing is kind of similarity actually the key lives within your AWS account, right? Within your region. So that's why I was able to show it to you within your AWS account, right? So for example, if I have an AWS account 101, so in that, in the Northern Virginia region, my AWS managed key, which will be there, that will be unique there, right? So it, it's not that AWS shares it with account 102, no. Right? So your key lives within your AWS account and within a particular region. I told you about the scope already. So that's common thing between AWS managed and customer managed. And you can of course see all its metadata, but of, uh, in case of AWS managed, you cannot change things. In case of customer managed, you can change it. The next important thing is that, as I told you, AWS creates one key per service per region, right? In case of AWS managed, only one key. So for example, even if you have got, let's say, 100 different buckets in Northern Virginia region and you want to use AWS managed key, then it will be the same key, AWS slash S3. That would be its alias. One key only will, will get created, right? So that's important. Uh, that's what I explained to you. Whereas when you have a requirement that you want to have uh, like multiple keys, right? Let's say you want to use one key for your app one application another key for another application right then you go for customer managed key of course and customer managed key you will have typically like the the strategy which you will follow would be that you will use one key for for one application or for one project you can think right so for example uh, let's say in your one application you have got two s3 buckets one rds database uh, four EC2 instances with their EBS volumes, right? Things like that, and maybe a couple of other resources. So what, what you could do is you can go ahead and create one customer managed key, right? One customer managed KMS key, and you can specify that key for all the resources of your application one. And then you can create another key called, let's say key two, right? Keys. 002 and that second key will be used for all the resources of second application right so that way you keep a tight control right and you are also segregating the keys per application wise and because i told you above already that you can control the permissions right so for example within within a particular account you have resources of two different applications application one and application two so um, there is a team one which is managing application one and there's team two which is managing application two right so what you will do you will specify the key policy in such a way that for key 001 only the team members of team one will have access right and for key 002 members of team two will have access so that way nobody can go ahead and access others data by any chance right you are able to segregate the responsibility and what happens is that when you are going for going for any of the regulatory uh, type of workload or wherever you need to wherever you need to do a lot of audits etc right uh, they ask for this thing that that you need to show very clear control on the key which is getting used for encryption so you can use customer managed keys to really segregate that which key is getting used for which resources and who all have permission to manage that key right okay so 
remember i already told you about envelope encryption so let's say the example which i was giving you if in one of your application there are five different resources two s3 bucket one rds and let's say two more ec2 instances right so though you are specifying one kms key but the actual data key which is getting used for encrypting all the five resources would be different right you have to understand kms key actually is not used to encrypt your customer data data key is used to encrypt your customer data right kms key is used to actually further encrypt your data key remember that part okay so let's move ahead in case of aws managed key the key rotation happens every year automatically you cannot change it you cannot disable it um, in case of um, customer managed key also the interval or you know frequency is one year so it happens every year but it is not enabled by default you can enable it if you want it right simple the in terms of pricing we have to understand this it's slightly different right how does the pricing work in case of aws managed key there is no monthly charge for the key right there is a fixed monthly charge for the key which you have to pay but for aws managed keys there's that charge is not there of course in case of customer managed key for every key you have to pay the that fixed charge which is which is just for its existence right over and above that for usage there are extra charges right so when for basically when you interact with a kms key by calling apis encrypt decrypt generate data key and this and that different api calls when you do for that also there is a usage charge so that usage charge will be there and will work in the same way for aws managed key also and for customer managed key also right nearly but just the monthly charge the fixed monthly charge which is there that uh, you don't have to pay for the aws managed key so those are two major types of keys and i showed you in the console as well but there is one more type which you need to slightly know which is your aws owned keys it's like it's like those internal keys right which are not visible to you you cannot go ahead and basically see these keys really in the console aws owns it aws maintains it and sometimes uses it uh, uses these aws owned keys to do the encryption of certain services now this is the one which which you see in case of s3 bucket right so just before this i was showing you that when you are trying to encrypt s3 the first option which you get which is now the default option sse hyphen s3 that option is the one which uses a key which is aws internal or aws owned key you will never be able to see that key in your account as such and you cannot go ahead and, and manage that key at all so just know that part okay so now that we understood the difference between aws managed keys and customer managed keys the next important thing to understand is the access control mechanism for the kms keys uh, of course for the aws managed keys you don't get to specify their key policy etc right as i explained to you but for the customer managed keys you get to control their access that who can who can use a particular key and who cannot use a particular key and so on and so forth so how do you actually go ahead and manage that so the first thing to understand there is the key policy right so uh, i was showing you that there is a key policy associated with every kms key um i'll also show you a demo after this you know we'll just do some discussion and then i'll show you a demo where whenever you create a new kms key a key policy gets created along with it right important thing to understand is that this key policy actually contains the details that uh, who would be the administrator for this key and who are the users for this key right so administrators are those who can let's say disable the key or um you know um change the rotation behavior of the key etc or delete the key for that matter whereas uh, the users are those um who will be actually using the key for all the 
encryption related stuff right let's say encrypt decrypt generate uh, generate data key pair those type of operations uh, are there which users would do right so all of that is specified in the key policy now if you remember this is like quite similar to um, similar to your s3 bucket policy right when you create an s3 bucket at the bucket level you can specify s3 bucket policy in the same way when you create a kms key you can specify a key policy at that key level so it's a resource based policy now there are some aws resources which support resource based policy like kms key uh, s3 bucket sqs uh, queue right sns topic and so on and so forth. there there are only some of those now the key policy for kms key is slightly unique right it is i mean its behavior differs from the uh, you know from the resource based policies for the for the other aws resources how does that differ it differs because in case of uh, kms key it is really important that at a particular key level that is in a particular kms keys policy right um, and allow should be there then only then only someone would be able to use it right let's say let, let me give a simple example let's say i'm creating a key called key one in my aws in my aws account in the oregon region and uh, in its key policy if i don't allow any user to use that key then if i have a user let's say mayank in that particular account and even if that user mayank has iam permissions attached to that user uh, to do all the kms actions the user mayank won't be able to interact with this key so that's how it is slightly different or unique right so that's why it is written here if the key policy allows it then you can also go ahead and further use uh, two more mechanisms which are iam policies and grants to to basically manage that who is able to use which key right so when you see the demo all of this should make sense but uh, in a in a very simple scenario yes what you could do is uh, create a key and as part of the key policy for that key you specify that okay user mayank should be able to use this key and user mayank would be able to use that key really right but of course in the real world the scenario would not be just that simple uh, you might want to do a lot of if and else and that's where other mechanisms come into place come into picture right so uh, let's understand very quickly so i am policy is something which you attach to a role and you role or a user as you know so um, as part of the iam policy which you are attaching to a to an iam role or to an iam user you can control that what sort of actions they can go ahead and execute maybe uh, to the user mayank you will only allow uh, encrypt and decrypt actions and you will not allow um, other actions let's say create key or uh, delete key and things like that right so you can you can control that what actions you want to allow to the user mayank there's also a thing called called grant kms grant uh, grants are typically used by typically used by aws services you know which integrate with kms to encrypt your data address for example ebs s3 rds all of these right so think of grants as like a sort of temporary arrangement when you want to give access let's say to an aws service for a shorter period of time that's when you go ahead and use grant right so think about this when when you actually uh, create an rds database or or let's say uh, an ebs volume and you specify a kms key uh, what happens internally is that a grant um, gets created and via that grant that particular aws service be it ebs or rds gets access to the kms key right and then it does whatever encryption decryption and once the task is complete the grant also gets deleted now all of this happens at the back end 
uh, automatically and hence you do not see it in case of an AWS service. But let's say uh, if if you want to write an application where where you want to give some sort of uh, temporary uh, permissions or for a shorter period you want to give permission to a particular KMS key, you may go ahead and create a grant. Uh, we can talk about grant in more detail in a separate video altogether. If you're really interested, let me know. We'll probably make a detailed video about that separately. So first, now let's look at a demo where we'll go ahead and create a key and try to understand the key policy part and how does it interact, you know, uh, with, uh, with the IAM policy of a particular user, right? So we'll see that with a demo. All right. So what I'm doing here is that on the left hand side, I'm there in a, one of my AWS accounts and I'm logged in as like an, like an admin user, not really a user with a role I'm logged in. And, um, this particular role has got administrator access so pretty much all the permissions uh, i'm operating in the in the oregon region uh, there are no customer managed keys at this point right as you can see good and on the right hand side what i've done in the in in a completely different browser i've got um, uh, i've logged into the same aws account but with a particular im user called mike okay so with that user i'm logged in same region Oregon in both the uh, both the windows. Okay, so what what we'll do first is a very simple thing. Let's go ahead and create a key here. So yes, I'm choosing it to be symmetric. I'll use it for encryption and decryption. All of these standard settings. Now I'm gonna call it. Let's say app one key. Right. That uh, that's a default alias I'm giving, or you can say the first alias which I'm giving to this key right okay if i want i can give tags as well but for now i'm i just want to show you some demo around alias so i'm leaving the tags for now uh, now here are the two important ones you see on the step number three it is asking me to specify that which users or roles which i am user or role should have administrative permission on this particular key right so I can choose one or more I am users or roles. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and select this particular role with which I'm currently logged in here. You can see AWS reserved SSO, AWS administrator access, right? This one. So that's the one which I'm selecting here. So with this, I'm saying make this I am role the administrator for this key, right? And there is a checkbox which says allow key administrators to delete this key. If you are ticking it, that means, yeah, this role can go ahead and even delete this key. Simple to understand, right? This is easy. Here is the important one, right? Now here it says, select the IAM users and roles that can use this KMS key, right? The user part. Now this is important. Now you can see here that nothing is selected at this point, right? Nothing is selected. And what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and I'll not select anything. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna select even this user, Mike, I'll just leave everything blank and I'll go ahead and say next. So it just shows me everything and then I'll go ahead and say finish. What we'll do next is we'll go ahead and review the key policy for this key, right? Which got created. So what happens is if you actually come um, to this screen, it shows you in this like uh, in this sort of uh, non-code view right but it would be better if you just switch to policy view so that you can see it in the json format now here one important thing to understand is in the as key administrators my role which i selected is being shown in case of key users of course nothing is shown right that's what that's the thing because we did not select anything but here is the thing when you switch to policy view and you look at it closely you will see that actually there are two statements here this is one statement and this is another statement. Now this statement is there for administrator, which makes sense. All the different KMS actions are allowed. You can see KMS create, describe, enable, list, put, disable, delete, everything is allowed for this particular role. This is the role which I had selected. Makes sense, this is no explanation required. But in addition to that, there is also another statement which has been put here 
which actually says enable IAM user permissions. And what, what does this statement say? It actually says that allow all the actions, see, allow all the actions to this principle. Now, if you have written um, some of the cross account policies or if you have written sometime uh, S3 bucket policies, you understand that what this thing means is basically allowing access to all the IAM users uh, within a particular account, right? Now, this this thing is this thing is not this thing is not really uh, really explicitly granting the permission to uh, per, you know it is not explicitly granting the permission to each and every IAM user, but but with this it says that yes, if a particular IAM user has KMS permissions attached as an as an identity based policy, then they'll be able to access this key, right? So I'll show you what what I, I mean. Important thing from here to take is that we did not specify this, but still this interface generates this thing for us, right? So let's keep this here as it is. What we'll try to do is we'll try to go ahead and interact with this key using this user mic on the right side screen. But before I do that, I want to show you the, the permissions which are attached to user mic. So let me go here. This is the user mic. I am user mic. This uh, user currently doesn't have any KMS related specific permissions, just read only access, view only access and Cloud shell full access, that's it. So of course, KMS generate data key uh, won't be there, right? So what I'll try to do now is I'll go ahead and um, I'll try to run that command. AWS KMS generate data key and I'll give key ID and instead of passing the whole ID, what I'll do is I'll, I can just give alias, right? So so you can see here, it, it gives me an error saying that, of course, this user doesn't have, you know, permission to call this action, of course, right? That is not possible because, uh, why so? Because if you look at this user mic this user mic doesn't have this thing attached as an as an identity based policy right so let us go ahead and and what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and attach a simple policy um, to this user and uh, where we allow this generate data key action and then this should work should be easy right so what we can do is go here and we can say add permissions and we can use one of the um, existing policies as well, which is, let's say, no, I don't want to use this. So what I'll do is let me probably um, just write a policy. Let's do that. So we'll go ahead and say create policy and uh, will select the service KMS and the action which I want to specify, which I want to allow is generate data key. And um, I can either go ahead and go for a particular resource, which could be this particular key, which I created, I can specify it's ARN, or I can either, I can also specify all for now, let me just go with all, right. Um, and I'll go ahead and just say next. And I'll say, oh, so this is what I'm doing. So I just created this policy, a very simple policy. And I'll go ahead and actually attach this policy here. All right. So this policy is um, added now. What I'll do is I'll now go ahead and run the same command on the right hand side. Uh, 
okay of course now the error is different it's not uh, i need to also specify um, another parameter of course so we need to specify key spec okay so you can see it was successful it worked now let's take a pause here um, our key policy here see here this one right so our key policy is allowing this thing and then the user mike also had permission to call you know to call this particular action that's why it worked now we want to just try out one thing what i want to do next is to show you that this part is really important so even when this user mike has got um generate data key allowed for every resource which means for every kms key if i go ahead and actually delete this statement from here then mike won't be able to use the kms key and that's where it is different from other uh, resource based policies for example in case of s3 bucket if you just leave your s3 bucket policy empty right if you don't write anything and you go and give permission to a particular im user via its im based policy that user will be able to access the s3 bucket you are not writing deny at this point it's just that you are not writing anything you are leaving it empty then in case of s3 the user will be able to access but in case of kms that won't happen let's do that so what i'm going to do is i'll say edit and uh, i'll just take away this statement from here okay um maybe i'll just cut it and say save changes so i've just pasted it in a notepad separately so now if you look at the statement or this key policy there is only one statement which is there for administrator right i have not changed anything for user mike i'll come here again in the screen and i'll try to run this command once again and we'll see that it doesn't work it again gives the error as it gave earlier that user mike is not authorized to perform now why is this happening this is happening because even though user mike has got identity based permissions or im based policy is attached the key requirement the important requirement which was there that at the key policy level it should have been allowed that is not there right that has been removed that's why that's why this im user is not able to access so you understand one important part that it is that it is a must thing that at your key policy level you need to allow access to to you know to a particular im user or to a particular im role now here what happened was that we did not specify any particular um, you know any particular im user or role but 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 there was a there was a statement which is this statement let me bring it but there was this statement which which just said that yes i am users in this account can can go ahead and use this key provided they they themselves have the permission right that's what happened so uh, let's let's just understand the other, uh, you know one more thing let's say you are creating a kms key and for that kms key you want to ensure that it can be used by a particular im role so what you need to do is you need to ensure that i mean the right thing would be that you allow that particular im role as a user for that key right you can do that um i mean we also saw that thing when we are when we were creating you know when we were creating the a new key at that time it gives you the option you can later on uh, go ahead and edit it as well okay so what i could do is i'll take this and i'll put it back here so save changes all good right so of course you can go ahead and do it in the policy view or if you want you can add you can add more users by pressing add here as well okay i also want to show you one more example here so um 
as the next step what i'll do is for this particular key which we have here right um, in the oregon region this particular key as you can see currently uh, i have not specified any user as part of the user section so what i'm going to do next is i'll go ahead and add user mic here okay and after adding user mic i want to show you the key policy once again now let's look at it so if you remember this is the part which was already there which i have explained you earlier right this just ensures that if some user has got identity based policy attached which allows kms actions then because of this part that user will be able to make use of this particular kms key right and then this part is there for the administration part now just now whatever i did because of that these statements got added this one let's look at this one here it says allow for this user mic these actions what are those actions encrypt decrypt reencrypt generate data key um, star is there so generate data key and data key pair and kms describe key right so and resources star one thing you need to understand um, in case of a resource based policy because it is written for a particular key that's why this resource part is kind of immaterial and just a star is written right because this policy is applicable only to this particular resource so the resource part is really not that important but because of this statement user mic we are saying that would be able to do these actions right and also user mic can go ahead and create grants right for this particular uh, for this particular key right so why why is this one required this one is required because um as i had told you earlier let's say this user mic creates an rds database or or an ebs volume and it specifies this particular kms key at that time this grant gets created internally uh, for that particular service it could be rds or ebs right i had explained this thing to you some time back so this part got added additionally now one thing i want to show you i want to go back again to this user mic and for this user mic let me just refresh this uh, to make sure that uh, we are at the right place and what i'll do is i'll go ahead and actually remove this policy you know okay so what happened just now is now this particular user mic has has actually got no identity based policy attached right no im policy attached really which has got kms actions right it has only got read only view only and aws cloud shell full access so now what would happen if user mic tries to <laughs> access this key whether it would work or not what do you what do you think let's go ahead and check whatever whatever you think is the answer uh write it somewhere okay so um let me go ahead and try to do aws kms generate data key and key id uh, is uh, right that's the key just to be sure yeah app one key and um, see i'm i'm just specifying the alias i can i can go ahead and specify the uh this key id as well fully but i'm just using the friendly name which is which is an alias so and then i have to specify the key spec and let's see if it works and it does right it will work why so because if you remember the the way the way resource based policies work right and i've explained this earlier in another video which i will link uh here below where you can go ahead and see that like you take example of s3 bucket in an s3 bucket right if you go ahead and uh, in an s3 bucket you go ahead and write a bucket policy in which you allow access to a particular im user in that account even if that im user doesn't have any im policy attached uh, to them you know to them um, um you know to do s3 actions that user will be able to access s3 same thing applies here right this user mike see here again 
this user might currently doesn't have any IAM policy attached uh, to themselves uh, for the KMS related actions, but because the KMS key policy has this thing allowed for this particular user mic you can see that's the reason why mic is able to execute these things and why mic is able to access the that particular kms key right so two scenarios we have covered one one scenario which i want to show you as part of this demo is what if we go ahead and create a key from cli what if we go ahead and create a KMS key altogether from CLI. So this key which you are seeing on the left screen, I created this key from the management console. What I'll do is I'll just launch uh, the cloud shell here and I will go ahead and actually create one key, one KMS key from the console. Okay. Before that, let me just click here so that you can see only one key is available. What I'll do is AWS KMS create key right of course i'm operating in oregon region so that's the region in which it will get created so what what i did is um, all i wanted to show you was that i will go ahead and create it with the default options right i did not specify anything additionally i did not say that who should be using this key i did not specify anything i just said go ahead and create a key with the default options so with the default options when it gets created you can see this is the key id if you see a13 i'll go ahead and refresh this and you can see this is this has come here right so a13 if i click on this i'll just i'll just uh, close this for convenience all right so you can see here that when we created it with the aws cli then also this one statement comes by default as part of key policy and if you remember this is the statement which is responsible, which is responsible to ensure that if any IAM user has got required KMS permissions, then that particular user would be able to access this key, right? So we saw that whether you go ahead and create it via management console or via CLI, the this particular part comes by default, right? This particular part comes by default, but what you need to understand is that uh, if at any point of time you are actually you are actually analyzing your key policy, you should go ahead and see the statement. If by mistake or you know, let's say somebody is editing and they have messed up this part, then even if certain uh, even if you have you have given permissions to certain IAM users, they will not be able to access this key well there is uh, one more thing which i would like to show you here um, it is about using a particular im role right uh, with the key so let's say whatever we saw till now uh, in our different scenarios was that user mike was going ahead and using these kms keys right so uh, we'll, we looked at this demo with the IAM user mic. Now I will show you the same thing with an IAM role, which is there in this account. Now this IAM role could be assumed by anyone. You may go ahead and write it uh, so that this IAM role can be assumed by someone within the same account or someone from, for, you know, from a different account, right? Or it could be that uh, that I am role gets assumed by uh, an AWS service like EC2, Lambda, etc. Okay, so in order to show you this um, thing, what uh, what I'm trying to do is um, I have created a new role. But before I show you that, uh, I think there is a there is a term which is slightly confusing here. So for example, if you look at this section, key users, it says that the following IAM users and roles can use this key for cryptographic operations, which is all good. We understand. And of course, if you press on this add button, it will show you all the IAM users and roles, um, uh, you know, in a in a pop up. But when you switch to policy view, I think uh, this part, uh, right, which we have talked multiple times, this part um, has a slightly confusing statement id though statement id 
really doesn't have any technical value as such uh, but what you need to understand is that this block basically this block is not just enabling um, access uh, by im users but also by im roles right within this account that's something important to understand if you have written uh, or you have watched our um, um, s3 bucket policy related videos uh, we have shown this many of the times right so when you write uh, this thing which is basically the account id colon root you are essentially allowing or referring or uh, or, or denoting all the im users and im roles in this particular account okay so here um, with this what it means is that um, any im im user or role uh, would be able to access the skip provided i mean one condition could be that uh, that particular im user or role is directly added here or if they are not added here then they can have an identity based policy with which it will work so i showed you all those demo so what i'm doing now is i just thought of showing it with a role as well here i've created an im role in this account right i just quickly went ahead and created it and uh, important thing to understand is this im role just has read only access and aws cloud shell full access that's it no kms related permissions are there with this im role and this im role is created in a way that it can be assumed by identities in this particular account you see okay so i'll show you once again this account is the 6466 and we are saying this particular im role uh, will be or can be assumed by users or roles in this account okay so that's what we are doing so what we'll do is we'll now go ahead and just bring this thing here so I've got another window all together in this window um this is the account 1738 right and what happens is uh, we will go here so i'm logged into this particular account already i will go ahead and say switch switch role and when i say switch role i need to put the details of uh, i need to put the details of this one now uh, right so i'll just take this and so so I'll switch to this particular IM role. And uh, after that, we'll try to access the KMS key. So, okay, we are inside this particular account now. You can see 6466. So I logged into this one and we'll try to just launch uh, Cloud Shell. Okay, so um, what we'll do is we'll try to now go ahead and access this KMS key. Uh, what do you think whether... Uh, this role can access this KMS key. Let's try and check that. AWS KMS. And I'll put, um, so let's look at this. Okay, we were we were looking at the other one. Doesn't matter, we can look at anyone. So, okay, we were looking at this one. So let me just pass key ID for now, right? I mean, I can do alias as well, but just for a change. Okay, so you can see there's an error. Of course, uh, this role is not authorized to call this particular action. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll just go here and say add and I'll search for this particular role. Here it is, role for account two and I'll say add, right? So I just added this particular role uh, at the key policy level. So if I switch to policy view and I scroll down, you'll be able to see that in this section, right? I've shown, I've explained this earlier in this section where the uh, statement is written to, uh, to basically allow a particular user mic that was written. Now there another principle is added, which is this particular IM role, right? So because of this, now what would happen is that um, this particular IAM role would also be able to access this uh, this KMS key. So let's go ahead and just execute this once again. So you can see it was successful. 
uh, we got the data key this is the data key in the plain format and this is the data key in the encrypted format right so it worked as part of this i'll just show this much i wanted to i wanted to just uh, tell you that that you understand that this part of your key policy is enabling any im user or role to be able to access this thing now in, i mean in this case what i did was um, i actually went ahead and added this particular role as part of key policy itself but of course i can do this i can remove this right and what i could do is i go to this particular let's say role and here i can add permission and i can say let's say i think i had written this earlier um chemist generate data key okay let me just add this policy to this user i mean to this im role i'm sorry so this im role now has got an identity based policy uh, which allows generate data key action right but the key policy doesn't have that user explicitly added here still it would work right because now uh, but now it will work because of the identity based policy so let us go ahead and run it again and you can see it is working right so i hope you are clear uh, just in summary the thing was that uh, this particular portion of uh, of your key policy is enabling im user and im roles both in this particular account so i hope uh, i hope you got that clearly some some of times this whole um, resource based policy and then identity based policy coming together may create uh, if, uh, you know certain doubts that's why i wanted to show you this thing so a lot of discussion around the whole key policy thing right and, and it's access control but let's let me just try and summarize this for you if you have seen all the demo till now then i think you would have understood it you should go ahead and actually try it out in your account for sure right then only you will be confident uh, but let me still summarize it for you once right so uh, for key usage right when i say usage in the sense encrypt decrypt a uh, type of commands or generate data key those type of commands so for key usage an important thing is um, number one is that it should be allowed in the key policy right now um, it may happen that uh, there is explicit allow for a user or role in that uh, then i am based uh, allow is not required right uh, please understand i'm not i'm not introducing deny statements or not including deny statements at this point of course if you if you include deny statement anywhere deny wins uh, above allow you know that part right so but first at least in terms of allow uh, statements you should understand that's what i'm trying to explain so here we are saying that if there is an explicit allow um for a particular user or role in the key policy then you don't need to attach i am based allow to that particular uh, user or role okay now the other thing is that if there is um, if there is no explicit allow for a particular user or role in the key policy there is no explicit allow for a user or role then you can attach i am based policy to that user or role okay so i hope you are clear of course this requires that um, it requires that um, there is allow for 
IAM users and roles in general at the key policy level now the the reason why i'm mentioning this this point in the brackets is that uh, i mean when you create a kms key i showed you in the demo that by default that statement gets added but you should be aware fully because sometimes it may happen that uh, somebody went ahead and messed up that statement so you should be aware right so these two things i hope are clear so this one was for key usage right let me just show this is key usage right now the next thing which we want to do is we want to talk about key administration right so let me get rid of this so now we are talking about key administration so for key administration um, how will you manage it with key administration we mean the operations at the key level let's say disabling the key deleting the key scheduling its rotation you know all those type of stuff or changing its uh, key policy even, right so all those type of things so for that what you could do is you can include uh, you can go ahead and include a particular user or role in the key policy right so for key administration first thing is you can include user or role in the key policy of course if you do that then i am based policy is not required at the user or role level right one important thing to understand here is that the typical policies or i am managed policies which are available for kms do not allow key deletion right it it doesn't allow key deletion let let, let me sh let me show you that if you search for key management policy right so there is just uh, this this one which is aws key management service power user the kind of the highest privileged aws managed policy for kms service now if you look at the if you look at the actions which are allowed in this particular um, policy it you know rest at the bottom it's all get list etc but the important ones are here right these three create alias create key and delete alias that's it delete key is not given here right so what i'm trying to say is that even if you go ahead and give this particular policy to some user or role they'll be able to create the key but they'll not be able to delete the key right so the the right thing would be the right thing would be to the right thing would be to specify that who is able to delete the key as part of the key policy like you basically go ahead and make a uh, a user or role as the administrator for your key right and when you do that when you do that entry for that particular user or role would happen in the key policy as i wrote here on the right hand side so that's the right way of doing things right of course if you have a particular user or role in your account who has got administrator access policy attached right so that means all the kms actions also allowed so of course that person will be able to go ahead and delete the key but you don't want to do that that's not the right thing to do um, you just don't want uh, people to have administrator access policy attached so that they can go ahead and just delete any key whenever they want that's not the right thing uh, auditor will give you a hard time really right so what you should do is what's what's the what's the right way of doing things is um you may you may choose to give uh, some user or role um this particular policy the power user policy which i showed you right so you may go ahead and give that i'm talking about this one this power user policy you may go ahead and give but this is this is kind of non destructive this will not let that user or role delete a key right they can at maximum create the key right and after that after once the creation of key happens along with that you specify that who would be the administrator for this particular key 
and then when you specify that it gets updated where in the it gets updated in the key policy right so that's an important thing um, of course here also the other part is applicable which is um, that if there is if there is no mention if there is no mention of admin in the key policy then a user or role with chemist delete key permission will be able to delete the key right i mean it is the same thing which i was telling right so you may go ahead and just give someone kms delete for all the resources then they that person would be able to go ahead and delete the key but that's not the right way of doing things so though i'm writing that second statement for your information but but you should not be doing that right so who is who is the administrator for a key you should always go ahead and define it as part of the key policy that's the that's the right way of doing it right in terms of usage uh, you may do it in both the ways which uh you know which i've explained on the left hand side so i hope that was a good amount of discussion around the key and key policies and with this summary it should be clear to you if it is still not clear feel free to write your question in detail uh in the in the comments below and we'll try to answer that okay but please be elaborate in your question and if you if you understood this part uh, and you're clear with this then go ahead and let me know that you understood that okay your comments are highly appreciated all right let's move ahead hey folks i got one more scenario here and i just thought uh, why not uh, talk about that one as well because like we have been talking about so many things around key policies so one more small scenario small thing but just wanted to call it out so that it is clear to everyone okay so i hope you are you are clear with all the other uh, scenarios and combinations which we discussed i highly recommend you to actually write it down on your end you know with with what you understand write it down and then go ahead and also experiment it you know with the key policy and i am based policy so that you are all perfectly clear with that one last thing which i want to quickly tell you in relation to this is that um we have understood that when you go ahead and actually um add a particular user user or role um in the key policy as this user i am user mike is added here then what happens is the necessary statements get added in the key policy right so for example because here my user has been added uh, as part of the key policy what it does is that in the key policy right so in the key policy if you go you will see um these sections or sorry these statements right as i showed you earlier for the user mike uh you know in order to allow user mic to be able to to encrypt decrypt couple of other actions and then uh user mic will also be able to create grants list grants etc right now the one last thing which i want to explain here is that we have also discussed that this part is important only when uh this statement is available then any of the im based policy would work if this part itself i go ahead and delete then even if a user has got im based policy then they'll not be able to make use of it i hope you are clear with that the point which i'm discussing here is what happens hear me out what happens if a particular user has been explicitly granted access or let's say if a particular user has been added as a key user a particular im user or role has been added as a key user as part of key policy and after that let's say we go ahead and actually take away this part let's say i'll go ahead and delete this part right so what would be the result so the question is whether user mike will now be able to go ahead and uh, execute this uh, key related actions or not what do you think right of course the this statement is available here so whether now user mike would be able to 
execute actions or not if i can show you user mic here as well the user mic doesn't have any identity based policy attached to attached to that user okay so if you go ahead and just try to let's say execute a command aws kms um let's say generate data key we'll do key id right and we'll also give would it work the answer is yes it should work and it will work so you have to understand be very clear that when a you know a particular user or role is added as uh, as a key user itself in the in the policy these these additional statements get added right for that particular user or role so because of this that particular user or role would be able to execute kms actions at that time at that time that older statement which was there at the top that is not getting used right it's that particular statement let me just let me just bring that statement back here so that we are clear about it i'm talking about uh, this statement right so this particular statement its significance is to enable access by im users or roles using their im based policy to enable that part this this particular statement is required okay this was one last thing um i thought i should uh, i should talk about this as well so i just thought of you know inserting this clip here recorded it later on of course you can guess that right so okay um, i hope you are able to understand this and uh, i want to tell you that you should go ahead and check out uh, different playlists which are there on our channel if you are really interested in learning aws in detail we have a lot of uh, aws videos about different services which are structured in different playlists so go ahead and look at the playlist section on our channel and you you might find it interesting okay let's move ahead then okay so i hope uh, that makes sense we will go ahead and discuss alias after this we'll try and understand what are alias so very simple uh, kms alias it's nothing but a friendly name for a kms key as i was showing you earlier as well the key id is generally quite long and you can give it a very friendly name uh, whatever you like a really friendly name easy to remember name that's what is an alias now the advantage of having this alias is that you can go ahead and use this alias instead of key id in many of the instead of key id in many of the commands or apis right for example just now i showed you when i was doing the generate data key command instead of specifying the long key id i just specified alias right so it became easy or somewhat friendly right now the good thing to is that a particular kms key may have no or multiple aliases right so for example just now i created one via cli and that particular key has got no alias at this point but if i want i can go ahead and uh, and add multiple aliases to it so it's not just one you can add multiple aliases to a particular key the upper limit i think the default limit um, of uh, of on the number of aliases per key is 50 right 50 50 but you can always go ahead and check it in your account important thing to understand is that within a region within an aws region an alias name is unique right so you cannot create two aliases with with the same name so it's unique right and as such kms aliases are independent resources they are not like a they are not they are not a property of a kms key so in your mind you can think about it like this that aliases are 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 a are a separate name which you create and then you associate it or attach it to a particular key, right? So it's it's not a it's not an attribute of the key. Rather, aliases are independent resources which you create and then associate with the KMS key, right? One thing one thing which I will suggest you to do is go ahead and check, go ahead and read actually all the different. commands or actions which are available with aliases like create alias delete alias update alias etc go ahead and read it in the documentation i'll put the link in the 
in the description so you can find it easily but i really recommend you to go ahead and read those okay so what does that mean it means because it's a separate resource altogether you may go ahead and delete an alias and it would not affect your kms key right um you can go ahead and actually you know reattach or reassociate an alias from one key to another uh, think of it in, in your mind if you want to think think about it like a like a dns right for, so for example you have a you have a domain name www.knowledgeindia.in so i can point knowledgeindia.in to to a particular ip first and then i can change it to another ip right and my user would just would just always uh, hit knowledgeindia.in and for some time they might go to first ip once i update it then it will go to the second ip right similar type of thing so you can have an alias let's say i have an alias called uh, app one key and i can uh, i can associate this alias to my first key for some time and for some reason if i want i can associate this alias to another key later on right at a time you can associate an alias only to one key of course so the good thing is that that i don't need to i don't need to change my code from wherever i am using a particular kms key like if i am using it via alias uh, the good thing is at the back end i can just change the association of 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 the alias from first key to the other key or from one key to the other key and it will just work smoothly right um so the you know if you want to do it programmatically or via command update alias is the action for that or the command for that up uh, over and above this alias also kms alias also has a very powerful usage which is a back attribute based access control right what is that let's try and understand that and this is a really interesting one so you can go ahead and implement a back or attribute based access control with kms aliases and a back is basically an authorization strategy where you define permissions based on an attribute right based on an attribute so that's the thing so um, i don't know if you have if you have done a back earlier but uh what you do is basically you you know it gives you power to actually implement permissions based on certain attributes of your resources so in case of kms what are those in case of kms you can go ahead and uh, actually control the access to your to your customer managed keys uh, via two types of attributes first one is tags and second one is aliases in in very simple terms think about think think about it like this right let's say i have got 20 kms key in my account in oregon region right 20 different kms key now out of those 20 keys i am using 5 keys for application 1 right so what i could do is i can go ahead and apply a particular tag called um you know let's say application is equal to application 1 on fi first 5 keys right and then i can write an iam policy based on this particular attribute value right for example i can say a certain particular user or role would be able to access those keys where tag right where tag application is equal to application 1 is true right so uh, for the other 15 keys right out of 20 keys for the other 15 keys application value might be something else in the tags right it may be application is equal to application 2 application 3 application 4 so my user or role would only be able to access the first 5 keys because there the application tag value is application 1 so you can do that same way you can also define it for uh, you know for aliases so for example you can say let's say i have got those 5 keys but what i will do i will i will actually um, i'll actually name the name the keys in in this way let me show you let's say i will be i'll go ahead and actually name the keys in this way app1 key1 app1 key2 right this is how i will be attaching the aliases to all the 
फाइव कीज राइट सो यू यू गेट द आइडिया ना वॉट आई कुड डू इज आई कैन गो अड एंड राइट एन आई एम पॉलिसी वेर आई विल से वेर आई विल डू समथिंग लाइक दिस राइट आई कैन डू दिस सो वॉट आई डू इज आई विल गो हेड एंड स्पेसिफाई सम परमिशन वेर आई विल बी आई विल बी यूजिंग वाइल्ड कार्ड एंड आई विल से वेयर द एलियस वैल्यू इज लेट से एलियस स्लैश एप वन की स्टार सो विच मीन्स ऑल ऑफ दिस वुड गेट इंक्लूडेड राइट सो अ पर्टिकुलर यूजर और रोल वुड गेट एक्सेस टू ऑल ऑफ दीज कीज राइट एंड इट बिकम्स इट बिकम्स क्वाइट ईजी दैन right and sometimes i mean you you might you might think that okay what about i mean we have got tags we have got aliases is there any one out of these two which is better so uh, i mean uh, you can go ahead and use them in different scenarios but one thing which is really different between them which is really unique i would say is that alias has to be unique right so for example within a region you can the alias name has to be unique right so uh, if you created an alias called app1 key1 then you cannot create another alias with app1 key1 name right so uh, so that's the thing uh, and that's why um, you know you may go ahead and make use of this uh, this uh, wild card type of thing of course tag based thing is also there so whichever works for a for your scenario you can go ahead and do that it also depends on the fact that what sort of permissions you are giving to other people right for example uh, generally you will give like if you are giving permissions to anyone for creating a resource you will also give them permissions to tag that resource like that's a very obvious practice now if you are using a back with tags then that means a person who is creating the key would also be able to very easily or or let's say someone who has permission to tweak the tags will be able to get access to a key as well right whereas aliases are a completely different resource altogether so you can control and give um, alias related rights only to certain set of people so that way you can make your whole thing lot more secure okay all right so the other thing is of course uh so instead of key id you can go ahead and play with tags or resources uh i already showed you that what you will do is in the like in the policy condition when you are writing i'll show some examples but the way you write it is alias slash name of the alias right uh you do not put the whole alias arn as such that's not the thing uh you can always use uh, wild cards like star to to do the multi character wild card right when you want to go ahead and use aliases and you want to do attribute based access control there are two condition keys which are which are useful for you which you will be using in your im policy the first one is kms colon request alias and the second one is kms colon resource aliases now um, you need to understand them properly i'll show you some demo uh, after this so so that you get it clearly uh, but first one is um, the request alias so uh, you can use this condition with uh, you know in an im policy as well and in your key policy as well right and uh, you will use this condition when you want to allow uh, an operation only when the request uses a particular alias to identify the kms key right a particular alias because here you see the name is request alias so it's a singular thing right so when whenever you use this particular key as a result of this thing what you get is a particular alias value right so it's a it's a singular type of matching it will become more clear when i show you uh, the demo but here like you will be using this when you want to match with match with a particular alias or you might also do wild card right whereas the second one which is resource alias is kms colon, colon resource alias is this particular condition key you cannot use it in key policy you will only use it in im policy only and you will use this condition when you want to control the access based on the based on the like multiple aliases or or based on the like all the aliases which are 
associated with the KMS key, not just one, right? For the second one, right, resource aliases, it doesn't matter that the command which is getting executed in that whether you are calling the key with the particular alias or not, that doesn't matter. What matters is that the key which you are targeting, that key has got that alias or not, just that much gets checked. Whether you are using the alias in your command or not, that doesn't matter. Whereas in the first one, in the request alias, you actually need to use that particular alias in your request itself. Right? It might be it might be sounding confusing, I know. So what we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and see a demo now for both of these things so that you become perfectly clear with this. And then we can we can revisit and I can show you this part once again so that you are clear about it. Okay. All right. So what, what I've done here is um, that I've created three policies. Um, you can see here alias demo one two and three right so in the first policy i'm making use of kms request alias condition key and as i told you earlier request alias key returns one value right returns single value so that's why we are able to just directly compare it and we are using the operator string like and then in the value we are specifying alias slash app star okay so let me also show you the different uh, keys which we have currently so uh, at this point i have got let's say in my oregon region i've got two keys and what i did i went ahead and uh, added two aliases for the second key um, one alias is called app two key and second is called new key you know just to show you this demo so i've added two aliases i can add more right i mean we can go ahead and add more and for the other one the first key i've got only one alias which is called app one key right so i hope this is clear so we've got two keys right and um, um, in this policy i was showing you here i've written alias slash app star so what happens is we'll go ahead to our user mike and currently user Mike has um, got no KMS related uh, uh, policies. And I also want to show you just to be sure for both of these um, um, policies. Okay, here's the thing, right? What I should do is I should go ahead and just remove this to be sure. So now at the key policy level, Mike is not added in the first key. I'll also go to the second one. Mike is not added, you can see, right? So from the key policy level, uh, any, any particular IM user is not allowed, right? So we will now go ahead and manage it by adding the policy to the IM user Mike, right? And we'll go ahead and say actually add permission and we'll go ahead and uh, search for this one, KMS demo one right so okay so this is added now what happens is uh, of course the action which we have considered here is generate data key I'm, i've just written one action for all the three scenarios you may add multiple actions it's up to you but important thing which i'm trying to explain you is this part right and this part is actually different in all the three policies right so first i am showing you this first one so what we'll do is on the right hand side for i'm logged in as user mike of course and what i'll do is i'll go ahead and try to execute this action aws game is gen uh, generate data key um key id um alias slash app one key right um and uh, key spec all right very simple i'll go ahead and say enter and it should work right why because of course i am specifying uh, this particular alias app one key which matches with this thing right and hence it works important one thing to understand here is this is KMS request alias, which means that the alias which you are specifying in your request 
which you are specifying in your request must match you know uh, with the alias of the key whereas you will see how this differs with the second thing in a bit okay now of course if i go ahead and i do it do the same thing with the second key if i do let's say app two dot key that will also work because it satisfies this condition right because app star so wildcard is there so app one key app two key app three key anything will work but let's say what i'll do is i'll go ahead and execute it for this alias there is one more alias here right new key if i go ahead and execute it for that alias what happens you might be able to guess already it will fail right why because because it it picks up or it it takes the alias which you are passing as part of the request here i'm passing it as new key right and that it will try to compare with this thing and that won't work right it doesn't match so it will fail so um there is this this page which i will link um, below in the in the documentation uh, in the description you should go ahead and actually read this part whatever i explained you that's also mentioned here you can see that the the return type for or or the um, you know with kms request alias the values which come back they are single valued only one value comes back and that's why we are able to directly use um, this thing like string like or string equals like that okay so i hope this one is clear it is very important that if you are putting the im policy with this condition key request alias then only those alias would work which satisfy this criteria even if you use some other alias of the same key which doesn't match with this thing it won't work right okay now i'm gonna remove this one and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, associate the next policy okay so this one this policy is um, making use of again the same action but it is making use of kms resource aliases um, condition key right and uh, here also the same thing alias slash app star but because this thing resource aliases returns multiple values that's why we cannot use a string like operator directly we have to use either for any value or for all value right you will get to read this thing um, here if you want you can go ahead and read this fully but i will explain you now with the demo later on if you want you can go ahead and read it as well so this is multi-valued it returns you uh, multiple values and that's why we have to use uh, we must provide either for any value or for alu for all values right so first example i'm using for any value what does this mean so here you have to understand here it says resource aliases so the the value basically the the alias which you are passing as part of your request and that is not important what gets considered is that what is the alias at the resource level and what is the resource here it is the kms key so let me show you an example okay so i will try to run the same command okay and um this time let's say with again with app one key i will run and it should work it worked let me just show you first all three and if i do with app two key that will also work and even with new key it will work okay now i'll explain you why what happens is it it actually just what it in in what way it gets evaluated you are passing alias app one key so for the for this particular alias the key which is there this is the key right so for this key this is the resource and for this key what are the available aliases 
now if you if you try to relate resource aliases right so for this particular resource what are the aliases so if you go ahead and see here there is only one right so of course only one value will come back and for that it is written for any value so if let's say if there are multiple values coming back then any one value out of that can be picked up and if that is matching with this then the condition is true of course for the first key uh, you know for the first key here only one alias is there so and that is matching if we go to the second key right like when i executed if you see on the right hand side when i executed let's say this last command right here i specified alias new key right so for the alias new key which is here basically you can see i mean here you can see so for the alias new key it is associated with which resource with this resource so for this resource what all aliases are there this one and this one so two values are returned and because i am i have i have written here for any value so what it tries to do is that any one out of those multiple values if that is matching with this thing then the condition becomes true that's why whether i specify new key or if i specify um, app to key that doesn't matter because it is not really matching with the alias which you are passing in the request no rather it matches with the alias of the resource right so whichever alias you are passing what is the actual resource for that and then it takes all the aliases of that resource and tries to do the matching okay so i hope you you remember this part now just the last part of this demo is looking at the third policy right so what i'll do is i'll just remove this one i just pre-created these policies so that um, you know the time gets saved of course you can see the policies are quite simple if you want you can just quickly create it on your end i'll go ahead and say add permissions here and i will go ahead and add the third one right so in the third one what what i'm doing is um, i'm actually making use of for all values right everything else is same for all values i am doing in this case what what happens is when when the multiple aliases values are returned because the condition says for all values then all those aliases should match this pattern if it matches then only it will be true right so let's let us go ahead and try to execute all the three commands once again we will first do it with app one key it should work right now we will run with um, app two key and it should not work see it did not work and of course even new key will not work what's the reason the reason for that is when i specified app one key right so it tried to pull it tried to pull all the aliases for that particular key and matched all the aliases with this thing and of course that works right app star that wildcard matches with this thing that's why it works it works but when i go to the second key here right when uh, you know when i actually specify um either new key or i am specifying app to key you can see here then what happens it is referring this resource and for this resource when it pulls all the aliases right because it's multi-valued it pulls all the aliases and all of them need to match that's why it is written for all values only when all of them will match with this given criteria then only condition will be true but in this case of course new key doesn't match with app star that's why both of these fail right so i hope uh, i hope that is clear to you um you know there can be multiple ways in which you want to group your uh, aliases and keys um, in your environment and with these condition keys you can go ahead and write really really complex permissions that who should have access to which thing right so i i i hope you were able to understand that i highly recommend you to go ahead and read these two articles as well along with the demo i'll put the 
link in the description okay um, if you understood that please let me know if there are any questions feel free to comment as well okay good let's move ahead encryption context now this is um, another important topic which we should touch upon what is encryption context it is just some additional set of key pair values um, that can contain any data set which you want right and typically it is something which is not secret right it is more to you know to identify and it's it's not something something like a password or anything like that right and it's a it's it's a key value pair or you can have multiple as well now encryption context as such is optional where when do you pass it uh, or where do you use it you may use it when you are let's say um, encrypting some data right when you are doing aws kms encrypt operation at that time you can use encryption context you can supply this information additionally though it is optional but you may supply it additionally what happens if you if you supply it additionally at the time of encryption then what happens is that you know kms actually kind of binds this data or binds this information with the cipher text which gets generated right the encrypted text which gets generated kms actually binds this information in that encrypted text then what happens later on when you want to decrypt you know that encrypted text then at the time of decryption as well or when you are calling the uh, kms decrypt function to actually decrypt that text you will have to specify the same encryption context value if you don't specify it your decrypt action or your decrypt operation will fail so in a way it's it's like you know apart from of course apart from the permission thing it's like a, it's like providing an additional value at the time of encrypting something and then the same value would be required when you are trying to decrypt it okay now of course uh, you can go ahead and use it uh, if you are trying to do some encryption or decryption as part of your code there also you can make use of this but apart from that typically when any of the aws services are doing encryption right at that time they they make use of encryption context right so for example in case of ebs volume or ebs snapshot right if it is encrypted um, so they make use of the kms key and what happens is like i've explained this to you earlier also uh, with the with diagrams that um, how the interaction happens with kms right and like a data key gets generated and then with that data key the actual encryption happens but later on in order to decrypt the data from ebs volume you need to decrypt your data key right because the data key is stored in an encrypted form so you need to decrypt it right if you if you don't remember that i explained it in the very start uh, of the series right so what happens is that basically when your ebs volume actually gets the uh, data key generated it doesn't get it doesn't get that data key generated just plainly with aws kms generate data key uh, command actually it also passes an encryption context at that time and within that it would pass its volume id right and later on for the decryption of the data key again the same encryption context needs to be passed which is basically the the volume id um, you know needs to be passed or system does that so you don't have to worry about it but but you need to know and what happens is when this encrypt decrypt or generate data key pair uh, actions are happening of course all of those are getting logged in cloud trail right so the encryption context also gets logged into cloud trail right and this is this is quite important please understand this let's say you have one kms key in your account and that is being used to encrypt uh four different ebs volumes it that kms key is also getting used to encrypt an rds database and 
two S3 buckets, right? So totally you've got four plus one plus two, totally seven resources you have in your project or in your application. And you are using one KMS key with all of these seven resources, different resources. As you understand, unique data keys will be getting used to actually encrypt the customer data with all the seven resources. But when it comes to usage of KMS key, by all of these seven resources, how do you identify those actions uniquely, right? How do you identify uniquely that, that at a particular point of time, volume one actually made use of the KMS key, right? Maybe in order to just, uh, maybe in order to just do the decryption of the data key for that purpose it used, how would you identify it in the form of logs or from the logs so you can go ahead and actually look for the encryption context uh, you know in, in those decrypt functions and you'll be able to find it um, i've just give shown you the example here for ebs service so uh, you know it will be actually in the form of like key value pair right so in case of ebs uh, volume or snapshot the key or the name would always be aws colon ebs id right whereas the value on the right hand side you can see that differs so if it's a if it's a volume uh, related operation it would be the volume id if it's a snapshot related thing it would be the snapshot id right so that's that's the idea an important thing to remember is that if you specify an encryption context at the time of encrypting something then at the time of decryption you have to pass the same thing if you don't pass it your decryption will fail. So I thought, uh, let me show you uh, a demo of this as well. And as part of that, we'll, we'll show you the encryption decryption as well quickly, right? Th there, is a, there is a video on the channel already, which I will link in the description, where you can go ahead and see this. I had shown this earlier in, uh, you know, in like really slow format i would say if you are interested you can go ahead and watch that um, i'll show you a demo now in which i will focus more on showing you the encryption context part so that you you know you become clear with this okay so let's look at that all right so we are back here um, on the right hand side logged in with user mic on the left hand side we have got two keys uh, at this point what i've done is i'll be making use of app one key so here I've gone ahead and just added user mic as a user in the key policy itself. So, so there is no problem in terms of permissions. Um, user mic would be able to, of course, you know, do all the actions like encrypt, decrypt, generate uh, data key, etc. With this particular key. Okay. So let us go ahead and uh, try to um, try to do this whole thing. What I'll do is I'll first go ahead and just create a very simple file uh, I want to write something to this so I'll say right so I'm just writing it to one file called PL normal right so this file is created okay you can see its content uh, what I will do is I want to go ahead and actually encrypt this particular file so for that what I'll do is I'll do AWS KMS encrypt and uh, key ID would be, um, I'll just use alias to keep it easy, right? The friendly name. So, and then the next thing is we need to give plain text. For that, I'll give this file, um, which is my PL normal. And I will also give encryption context. Uh, here I'm just gonna give a key pair let's say creator is equal to ki for example right so I'll go ahead and press enter and with this you can see that um, I got the cipher text blob so basically that's the encrypted text so what what we'll do is just to make sure that we are not mixing up things I have just uh, you know written that what what would be the name of different files uh, which i'll be using as part of this demo okay so um, this is the first file which i created which had the plain text and of course um, now i have encrypted it uh, but i've not written it to any file so what 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 i'll go ahead and do is i'll actually what i should have done was just 
take out the ciphertext blob from this and write it to a file, right? So what we could do is uh, simply change the output format to text and query just this particular attribute, which is ciphertext blob, right? And we will write this to a file called ENC64. So I'm just naming it ENC64 because the result which has come will be will be a base64 encoded so that's why it is so this file is created great and um, in case if if i want to change it to to you know to binary format what i could do is i can use um, this utility and i can go ahead and um, convert it and put it in um, see normal right so you can you can go ahead and see the content if you want um, of these files so this and right okay so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to do the decryption now that's the important one now when we try to decrypt right we'll say decrypt and um, we want we'll have to give um, ciphertext blob and i'm just gonna say file uh, b colon double slash enc normal so now if i just give this and i press enter it should not work right so it says an error occurred when you know you are calling the decrypt function it, it doesn't it doesn't um, give very detailed thing that you have not provided the encryption context but it says that your ciphertext uh, has an issue, right? So it's giving an exception. So what, what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and actually uh, pass the encryption context, right? And um, the encryption context was creator is equal to ki. So if we go ahead and do that, all right. So it has now done the decryption right so that's what i was talking to you that if you have used encryption context during encryption uh, then you need to specify the same thing for decryption to happen so of course you can see um, this thing if you want you can just you can actually go ahead and uh, take this thing out um, and put it in a file and i'll go ahead and put it in this file right so um this file has got the decrypted content but it is still uh, base64 encoded so if you want to see it normally what you can do is decode it um, and write it to another file right and now if you go ahead and see this file okay so you got the plain text back again which is you will learn only with hands-on work so go ahead and make sure that you try out all the all the demo and all the exercises which i've been showing you uh, in this whole series of uh, kms uh, uh, videos okay all right so i hope that was clear uh, let's move on to the next thing now we will talk about s3 encryption I'm sure you have created an S3 bucket and you have seen the option of encryption there. So you can go ahead and specify the encryption settings at the bucket level when you are creating a bucket, right? But you have to understand that actual encryption happens of the object, right? Not the bucket. So you can specify a setting, encryption setting at the bucket level and then those settings get used for all the objects inside that bucket but if you want you can override those settings for for a particular object as well right so if you want you can override so it makes sense that whatever you want as the default setting or whatever you want to use with 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 most of the objects you go ahead and define that setting at the bucket level but if you want you can go ahead and later on override that at at a particular object level inside that bucket so remember that ultimately it is the object that gets encrypted right so it is possible that within a bucket you let's say you have 10 objects for example uh, out of that two objects are encrypted 
with a, you know with a different setting or with a different key and the other objects are encrypted with a different setting so that brings us to the point that what are the different types of encryption settings with s3 because um, unlike many other services s3 has got many types of encryption options available for example if you are creating let's say ebs volume or rds uh, database there you just have to choose the kms key now it could be an aws managed key which we have discussed already or it could be your own customer managed key within kms right but that's all you have to do but here in case of s3 you have got multiple types of server side encryption settings available so first one is server side encryption with amazon s3 managed keys now this is the default option at this point i mean they introduced it some time back but then i think last year or so uh, sometime they actually mandated this thing so now uh, you cannot have an object or a bucket unencrypted anymore right so uh, by default when you create a bucket if you don't specify any particular option then this is the option which gets selected and same is there for your objects so here what does it say it says that it will your object will get encrypted with amazon s3 managed keys now please understand this is the third type of key which i explained you earlier uh, you know in this series of videos uh, like i explained you about the kms keys when where within kms you have got aws managed and customer managed and then i had explained you about amazon owned keys right which is you can think that they are internal keys which amazon manages and you do not get to see those keys within your account right so these are those uh, these are the keys uh, you know which we are talking here or which gets used uh, with sse hyphen s3 with this option this is the default one you don't get charged for these keys you don't get charged for the encryption and decryption operations as well right so uh, if you go ahead and use this particular option with your s3 buckets and or objects uh, there are no encryption charges totally free right so a good one to use by default and now it is enforced by default second one is sse kms the one which you will probably use the most um, so server side encryption with aws key management service keys right so kms keys with kms keys and that's why it is called sse hyphen kms so in with sse kms you have to choose a key from your kms right so it could be the default uh, you know the default aws managed key uh, in the kms for example if you remember aws slash s3 which i showed you right that one which is which is an aws managed key or you may go ahead and create your own keys right like uh, as i showed you in the other demo like app one key app two key i created right so you can go ahead and create your own kms key and you can choose that as well right so that's the second option now of course in this option uh, you will pay charges for your kms usage as well right as i have explained to you earlier so you know you understand the pricing from there um, that but you will be paying kms related charges in this case okay um i will be uh, coming back to this and telling you a few more important things related to this but after a, after a while let me just quickly cover the other two types so you also have one more which got launched some time back called uh, dual layer server side encryption uh, with again with aws kms so here what happens is in terms of using the key or to, or in terms of using the key you will be using a key from kms only okay you will be using the key from kms but what happens is instead of one time encryption on server side two layers of encryption happens or two times the uh, you know your object gets encrypted so for example you already know that the way encryption happens is from the kms key a data key gets generated and then that data key is used to encrypt your actual customer data which could be ebs volume s3 object or whatever or rds database right so what happens here is that till now we just said that one time 
your data gets encrypted in case of this option number three dsse hyphen kms what happens is that from your kms like two data keys will get generated you can think and then your object will will get encrypted two times so first it will get encrypted with one data key and then whatever is the result that will get encrypted with the second data key and both the when both these encryptions happen the algorithm used would be different right so this this will be used in only in certain cases where you know you are probably doing something for something for a particular government organization or if you have to comply uh, very you know comply to very strict requirements in those cases you might not use this on on a day-to-day -day basis right and then you have the fourth one here which is called um, SSEC which is server-side encryption again but with customer provided keys so the only difference between point number two and four is that in case of number two the key management is happening at KMS level right so you are not worried about managing the actual KMS key because KMS manages it but in case of SSEC option if you go you have to provide the key uh, during the encryption and then later on during the decryption as well right so what happens is let's say you want to encrypt something so at that time with that request you will pass the key uh, AWS will go ahead and do the server side encryption with that following the standard process later on it will delete that key but it will um, it will like store its encrypted format uh, later on um, when you want to actually go ahead and decrypt it once again you will have to send the key which AWS will match that whether you are sending the correct key or not and if you are sending the correct key then uh, AWS will go ahead and actually decrypt your data using that particular key right basically here what what happens is is that the key management falls on your uh, you know uh, I mean the key management becomes your responsibility of course so you will only go ahead and use this one uh, when let's say you have your own uh, infrastructure already in place to manage the keys and you want to use those keys to encrypt some data on cloud that is when you will go ahead and use this one otherwise you will go with the SSE KMS option one more thing to understand here is that this option fourth option number four here is not available uh, like you will not see this in the management console right you will be if you want to use this you will be using it via commands via CLI or via your API calls so let me just quickly show you this thing here um, so here if you are trying to create a new bucket you will see all these options so you see the first one which is server-side encryption with uh, Amazon S3 managed keys you just select this you don't have to select any key etc because it will use Amazon's uh, own internal keys right if you go with this one which is SSE KMS then you have to choose the key if I select this thing then in the drop down I can go ahead and select the key so you can see I've got AWS slash S3 which is the AWS managed key and plus I've got two more um, customer managed keys in the Oregon region which you have already seen in the previous demos so that's coming up here in the drop down I can select any one out of these three right let's say I go ahead and select this for example then there is an important thing there is a new thing called bucket key which I'll be explaining you and which is really really important I would say um, if you <laughs> if you want to save some money for your organizations right so this is a new concept called bucket key which they have introduced and it, this is quite useful if you are using the SSE KMS option then it is it is very useful thing if you are using SSE KMS option then AWS recommends that you enable bucket key which will lower down the cost for you lower down the KMS cost for you uh, you know by reducing those uh, encryption decryption type of operations now how does that happen that I'm gonna explain you in a bit but remember that um, if you are using SSE KMS option then you should go ahead and enable this of course um, this thing is not applicable with DSSE KMS and of course would not make sense with SSEC so bucket key is important uh, when you are using SSE KMS option so what is this new bucket key thing and you know 
what's what's new about it so let's let's try and understand that okay so um s3 bucket key <laughs> that's the name um yeah new name but and uh, remember it and please do not get confused or uh, mix with mix it with something else right so um you can choose s3 bucket key option uh, if you are using SSE KMS mode, right, and it will lower down your KMS charges as I told you. What happens with this really is, first in very simple terms, if you want to understand it, it's, uh, it might look slightly complex, but I'll try to, I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Uh, if you have understood the envelope encryption, which I explained to you earlier, then you should be able to grasp this thing, right? So, uh, what happens? with s3 bucket key really is that uh, between the kms and the data key now you can think that one more layer of data key gets generated which which is which is what we are calling as bucket key now right think about it like this that earlier you had kms key and then from that the data key was getting generated now in this new scheme of things what happens is that you have got your you have got your kms key and then from that a data key gets generated which is which is short-lived temporary uh, which we are calling as s3 bucket key you can see it in the middle and then from this bucket key actually the data key gets generated which is then used to encrypt the object okay so that's what it is now we have to understand that how this whole thing works the kms key always lives inside kms service and you get charged uh, by the kms service when you do let's say encrypt or decrypt right and think about it this way um if you are uh, let's say you have got many hundred thousands of uh, objects uh, in your s3 bucket and all of them are encrypted with sse kms option and um, they are getting uh, read very frequently right they are getting requested by your customer very frequently so every time uh, you know um, the object is downloaded or object is uh, fetched from the s3 bucket it needs to be decrypted and whenever whenever it has to be decrypted what does that mean it means that um, the encrypted data key if you remember the if you remember the um, the flow which I had shown you earlier, maybe I can maybe I can just bring it up here one minute for you. All right, if if you if you remember this diagram which I which I showed you earlier, whenever the data has to be decrypted, the the encrypted data key is fetched from there, and then a request has to go to a KMS service to actually decrypt that data key so that the plain data key can be obtained and then via that the object gets decrypted right so you remember this thing now in this whole thing which you are seeing on the screen what's really happening is every time an object has to be accessed or uh, or my data has to be decrypted let's say a kms action is involved a kms decrypt request is involved so think about this think about it in case of uh, in case of s3 where you have got an s3 bucket and you have got many hundreds thousands of um, objects available there and if they are getting decrypted multiple times right so many kms decrypt call will happen and your kms bill would go very high so that's that was the problem which which came uh, to aws and they thought of solving it and the way they solved it was they kind of introduced another layer of key which lives or which is contained within s3 but then it is also short-lived but i'll try to explain you how it works it might not make a lot of sense or it might not bring your cost down if you are not if you are not reading a lot very frequently but if you are reading a lot or many times very frequently then s3 bucket key would actually make a lot of sense so let's go back to our diagram once again the thing which i want to explain you here is that 
let's say for for now for now just think that we are uh, we are showing this diagram for a particular s3 bucket for one s3 bucket and within that s3 bucket only one object is shown here on the right hand side right as you can see L later on if you want i mean you you may imagine later on that we'll have more objects of course uh, you know within this uh, s3 bucket but for now don't worry about it now now the thing is the the way this whole s3 bucket key thing works is that from the kms uh, service you can think that our data key gets generated which we are calling as bucket key right okay now what happens is that using this bucket key the actual data key gets generated and you know that the plain format of the data key is used to encrypt the object and the encrypted data key is stored with this thing right so what happens is this bucket key is actually short lived right it doesn't it's not like it got generated once and then it lives forever no it i mean they do not say that for how much time it lives but it's it's it is it is actually short lived uh, generally uh, you know gets deleted uh, after a particular session is over or even somewhat sooner it do, they don't say the time exactly but so what happens is let's say a bucket key got generated and from this now at this point let's say 10 objects need to be encrypted right so what would happen is that using this bucket key as you can see here one data key got generated for this object right in the same way using this bucket key another data key can be generated let's say this is another data key right and this is for this particular object which is let's say object number two same way this bucket key can be used for creating a third one right and this will be used to encrypt object number three an important thing to understand is that always a unique data key is getting used to encrypt every object right so we are we are achieving this now let's say after that the requirement was not there for some time and let's say as i told you that bucket key is short lived then this bucket key is deleted now though this bucket key is deleted the plain format of this bucket key is deleted what they have implemented is that the encrypted format of this bucket key will be stored will be stored in this s3 bucket understand that this whole thing which we are talking currently is inside one s3 bucket at this point right i told you that within that s3 bucket let's say this is one object this is second object and this is third object and so on and so forth so what happens is the encrypted format of this bucket key lives um, within the within the s3 bucket and let's say after some time decryption needs to happen right let's say these objects need to be decrypted so let me clear this off so that uh, we can understand it properly okay so when we want to decrypt things what happens if you remember the flow of decryption whenever something needs to be decrypted first thing is that the encrypted data key is retrieved from the object and then this needs to be decrypted how would it get decrypted in order to decrypt this we require the bucket key right but bucket key is not there so how do we get the bucket key then at that point the encrypted bucket key will be fetched right and that will be decrypted via kms right so let's say one time this decryption happened and as you know um, in the response of kms we will then get the plain format of bucket key now once this plain format is available using this the data key can also be decrypted and once again we will achieve we'll get the plain format of data key and once we have the plain format of data key with this we can go ahead and decrypt the object
right so i hope this part is clear but just just don't think about this operation as as one off think that many hundreds or thousands of such objects are getting decrypted very quickly one after another right there is a heavy demand lot of objects are getting decrypted so at that time what would happen is the bucket key need not get decrypted multiple times from the kms maybe first time it got decrypted and then we have this plain bucket key available in the memory now right in the working memory now using this bucket key which is there available in memory now using the plain bucket key we can decrypt all the data keys which are actually used with multiple s3 objects and that's where the cost saving comes into picture if you think about let's say there are 20000 objects in this s3 bucket and all those 20000 objects are getting decrypted very quickly multiple times again and again at that time you have actually reduced the kms level operation drastically because the kms level decrypt happened only once and once we got the bucket key here then everything else like everything what i'm drawing now all of this thing is actually happening inside s3 and hence there is no kms charge for that that's the beauty here okay so i hope i hope you you got this thing if not please hear it out once again okay so so what we understood here was um, that plate plain format of bucket keys are short lived right they get deleted uh, once the task is done but the encrypted format of the bucket key gets stored right uh, within the bucket securely and the encrypted format of the bucket key will be decrypted later on by the kms action by calling a kms decrypt call and then via that once we have the bucket key available again in the plain format then using that we can decrypt as many data keys as we want and we are not going back to kms again and again so that's how we are reducing the cost for our environment i hope you understood this s3 bucket key concept uh, i'll also link some of the some of the um, useful articles related to this this is somewhat new concept um, there are some really good articles related to this and how you can go ahead and enable this for your existing buckets and you will have to do a bit of work um, you know to um, uh, on on your existing buckets if you want to enable this on all the objects which are which are which are let's say already encrypted if you want to enable this thing then you'll have to do some additional work but if you do that once you will surely see some cost benefits i mean again it makes a lot more sense if your objects are getting uh, let's say accessed a lot if it is not getting accessed a lot you you are your data is more like it is kept there and it's not it's not very frequently accessed then you might not see lot of cost benefit okay all right so i hope uh, that made some sense we will now move on to the next section we are now moving towards the end of this master class and of course the discussion won't be complete without discussing the pricing of this particular service okay uh, thankfully nowadays people have started uh, taking interest actually in the pricing of uh, cloud services i've tried to stress this thing for past many years that you need to understand the pricing of each and every service knowing the functionality is important knowing its security uh, high performance all of that is great that's also important but you also need to understand the pricing mechanism of every cloud service which you use and um, unless until you understand that uh, properly what would happen is that at the end of the month you will get bill shocks right um, nowadays people have started talking a lot more about the about the pricing of different services and how to save cost and everything and the whole finops um, is becoming quite important well that's a good thing so now under let's understand the pricing for kms okay and it it's not very complex but yeah let's let us understand the different points related to it the first thing here is um, about 
the KMS key. So when you go ahead and create a KMS key, right? When I say you create, it means it's a customer managed KMS key I'm talking about. If you go ahead and create it, there is a monthly charge for that key, right? $1 per month. It's prorated. So if it is like, let's say you have created something in the mid of the month, then you don't get charged full $1 lesser than that. But the point is that there is a charge for that. Of course, for AWS managed KMS key, there won't be any charge, right? But if you are creating customer managed uh, KMS key will have a charge, right? Uh, there is no such charge for AWS owned key as well, which I think we had discussed earlier. So there is a charge for the key and then there is another charge for using the key right so which we call as usage charges so what uh, what is the usage usage is when you call kms actions like encrypt decrypt um, generate data key etc so different um, kms apis which you call right so there are charges for that as well and for usage you will get charged in both the cases whether you are calling or basically using an aws managed kms key or you are using a customer managed kms key in both the cases you will get charged um, thus the rates might slightly differ from region to region so you can go ahead and see it in the documentation but roughly 0 0.03 dollar per 10,000 requests right that's important one to understand one thing which i want to make clear here that you get charged when like you are doing let's say kms encrypt decrypt and sometime back when we talked about s3 bucket key that's the part which it took away right so it actually um, made sure that that you don't have to like call that many times kms um, KM, you know kms decrypt function rather that whole whole operation just happens within the s3 bucket itself with the help of that s3 bucket key thing right so because of that the charges go down i hope you understood that one if you did not then write your question in detail or your doubt in detail in the comments below okay um of course there is as i told you there's no charge for using aws owned keys right but this is available only with few services and wherever it is available aws like provides that thing and it's it's not like you can just go ahead and choose it with every service so for example in case of s3 we saw aws gives that option do you get a similar option with rds answer is no right one last thing to understand here is that uh, in your enterprise setup if you are using uh, a kms key which is there in one account and it is being used by let's say some resource or some code uh, which is there in the other account right cross account access if you are doing then how does this work it is important to understand that when you are doing cross account key access right by calling key uh, apis like encrypt decrypt etc etc then the account which is making the call which is making the api request gets charged for the key usage right let's say you have account one and account two in account one you have the key and from account two right encrypt and decrypt calls are happening then for the api call or for the usage account two will get charged whereas because the key lives in account one the monthly charge will go to account one okay i hope that is clear all right so with that we come probably to the last part of this master class where i've written some scenarios or exercises for you which you should go ahead and do in your account i highly recommend uh, that you have watched this much thing and maybe you maybe you did some of this along with along with me as i was showing but if not you should go ahead and do these things for sure and uh, that will give you a lot of confidence so the first one here would be uh, that you go and spend some time with kms cli commands right go through the documentation of uh, kms cli commands and uh, try out some of those some of those commands which which you surely understand right for example we talked about many of those in this um, you know in the session we talked about encrypt decrypt generate data key 
and if you go ahead and see you will find a few more like uh, create key delete key disable key those type of things and um, some of the other options we discussed you will find equivalent commands for those so it would be a good idea to go ahead and actually practice those things okay and 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 read through the documentation and then examples would be given you can go ahead and try it out you can configure CLI on your machine or very simple go ahead and just use cloud shell from your management console uh, please be aware that uh, when you do these practicals it might cost you small amount uh, in your account but but i think that you should be open really uh, to to do the practicals and learn stuff you cannot just you cannot just read or watch things and with that you will get the full knowledge you need to really go ahead and do it in your account okay um next thing which i would say is go ahead and try to do this in your aws account let's say bu01 is the name of your aws account create an im role uh, we are calling it a role and uh, uh, this role can be assumed by an im user within your account that im user is user1 now after doing that uh, for this im role um, you can associate uh, a managed policy aws key management service power user go ahead and review this policy i showed you this policy earlier uh, in the session so go ahead and look at this policy understand what all this policy can do after that user one can assume this role and then user one would would actually would, would actually go ahead and create two kms keys in oregon region let's say and uh, try to associate multiple aliases with these keys which you have created right and um, go ahead and try to try to implement the aliases related demo which i showed you some time back in this session try to write those uh, those uh, policies which are like kms request alias and kms resource aliases write all of that and try to try to implement it when you are doing various things also look at the key policy carefully and try to understand the key policy completely what is meant by each and every line there right um, and you can you can create one more im user in your account let's say user 2 and try to experiment with that user and then you know go ahead and try to uh, whatever policies you set for your key go ahead and try to execute it by a different user called user 2 let's say right so do that and uh, one last thing here i would say is go ahead and create let's say an ebs volume and s3 bucket and objects and that and for that utilize your kms key for encryption right so do this and after that maybe write objects to the s3 bucket and read it or download it do some reading and writing to the ebs volume etc and after that go ahead and try to try to look at the cloud trail logs and look for the entries related to key operations and you should also be able to find the encryption context thing which i explained you you should be able to find that in the cloud trail logs okay so do all of these things and this will give you a good amount of understanding with kms uh, i'm also linking uh, some of the really important articles or which you should surely go through of course the whole documentation is quite big so the more you are able to go through it's better but i will link some of the key things which you should go through uh, in the description section below or you will find a link to a detailed article which we'll put on our website so you can go ahead and read from there and you'll get everything at one place and i'll also link one or two more advanced videos um, from aws at, uh, themselves so once you understand all the concepts which we are which we have explained here and if you have experimented yourself you can go ahead and actually uh, watch those somewhat advanced videos and um, that will give you even more uh, you know exposure to some of the some of the more complex scenarios which you may go ahead and implement so i'll link all of that below and uh, that should be your further reading after this master class right 
so i hope uh, you learned something from this tutorial and thanks a lot for giving time and sticking till this point if you have actually uh, watched it till here then please uh, put a comment below and let me know that how much time let's say you took to complete this whole thing what's your feedback if you really liked it go ahead and share it with others maybe they'll also find it uh, easy to understand right um, if you have any questions doubts or feedback put it in the comments below i'll try my best to answer them try to ask your doubts in an in a detailed manner so i'll try my best to answer that and if you have some suggestion or appreciation feel free to write about it so with that i'll go ahead and uh, close this aws kms master class and we will meet again in another session see you